Hi, y'all. Wu here. Do you ever get the impression that you're swimming in an ocean of red herrings? And I don't mean that lovely eating fish that nearly done gone extinct from overfishing. I mean the red herring that the dictionary calls something intended to distract attention from the real problem. I reckon we're being duped by the mainstream media on just about everything. It seems that false flags are flying from every pole. Weapons of mass destruction, 9-11, pandemic, global warming, global cooling, CO2, alien invasion, sustainable development, Green New Deal, identity politics, gender dysphoria? Seems a bit flaky to me, and I don't mean fish scales neither. Sixty Minutes Rewind. Tomorrow morning, for the first time in four years, UN weapons inspectors will be back in Iraq to scour a country the size of California for evidence of weapons of mass destruction. Number two. Yeah. This just in, you that were looking at we have a breaking news story very to tell you about it. Tell you that is the we World Trade Center, and we have just done a report on the explosion at the Trade Center. As we come on now, we have serious news of a major, a very tragic war for the world. It's incredible. The plane crashed into the World Trade Center. Well, it's the moment so many people have been waiting for. Donald Trump is suing Hillary Clinton and her allies over falsely linking him to Russia. Trump filed the lawsuit in a federal court in Florida where he states Hillary Clinton and her cohorts orchestrated an unthinkable plot against the former president. Included in the lawsuit is Hillary Clinton, the Hillary for America, the Democratic National Committee, former FBI Director James Comey and many others. The 108-page document details the damages and demands for a trial by jury. It states, in the run-up to the 2016 presidential election, Hillary Clinton and her cohorts orchestrated an unthinkable plot, one that shocks the conscience and is an affront for this nation's democracy. Well, we, we definitely um, received substantial evidence that he was involved in trafficking young women and children to the Virgin Islands for um, a very long period of time through our airport, through his private jet. And then he would, by helicopter or sometimes boat, would then transport them over to Little St. James. And that's where he has his complex, where he lives, which is his official residence as well. And that these young girls and women were subject to uh, sexual assault, sexual exploitation, um, through coercion, false imprisonment. One of the nation's best hospitals, Boston Children's Hospital, is now the first major pediatric hospital in the country to establish a gender surgery center. According to their website, the center currently offers vaginoplasty, metoidioplasty, phalloplasty, chest reconstruction, best, breast augmentation, facial harmonization, and other gender affirmation surgeries to eligible patients. Fentanyl is a highly potent opioid. It's at least 50 times more potent than heroin. People are being exposed to fentanyl without knowing it. And because it's so highly potent, people are dying at unprecedented rates. Kim Kardashian has undergone a lot of changes to her face over the years. But what plastic surgery has she had done? I'm going to give you the answers right here on this video. My name is Dr. Anthony Yoon and I'm known as America's Holistic Plastic Surgeon. And today I am going to break down what I believe Kim Kardashian has had done to her face to give her the changes that you're seeing here. King Charles and Queen Camilla's coronation may be over, but there's one moment from the ceremony that caught people's attention. Onlookers are convinced they spotted the Grim Reaper at Westminster Abbey as guests started arriving to the historic event. In the video, a hooded figure in all black can be seen walking across the aisle holding a long stick. 
The quick moment had royal fans talking on Twitter with one user writing, anyone else just notice the Grim Reaper at Westminster Abbey? A United Airlines jet lands in Los Angeles, launching the biggest entertainment airlift in motion picture history. The world's press, some 300 newsmen from four continents, arrive for the Hollywood premiere of Stanley Kramer's It's a man, 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 man. There was a certain amount of money buried down in this park. Now, I suggest that we quietly get into our cars, and then when we get down there, we dig up the money, providing that there is some money there. There's only one way to figure it, and that is every man for himself. And so begins the maddest, wildest, zaniest chase ever filmed, as our merrymakers race across country by land, by sea, by air. For somewhere, there's a fortune in buried treasure. Which one of our Mad World comedy stars will be the first to reach it?